Hi, welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. I haven't mentioned this in the show before, but I work at a camera store. And a question I've been asked many times by people that I've sold a camera to is, I've got all these videos on my computer from this great new camera you sold me, but how do I make a DVD that Grandma can play in her DVD player? So that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. How to make a DVD that you can play in any DVD player. Now in the past, I've used a professional program to do this. So, I did a little looking around, and I found a great piece of free software that allows you to make a DVD from virtually any kind of video file, and it's easy. So without any further ado, let's check it out. The program we're going to be using today is called DVD Flick. You can get it at dvdflick.net. After installing the program and running it for the first time, there's a couple settings I recommend you set before you uh, try to make your first disc. Go up to Project Settings and select Burning. If it's checked, uncheck Create ISO Image. Then check Burn Project to Disk. You can leave Disk Label alone. Drive. If your computer has more than one optical drive that can create DVDs, select the one you want to use to make your discs. Leave Speed alone. I recommend unchecking automatically erase disk if it is rewritable, unless you are going to be using rewritable media frequently. It's caused some errors for me when using standard disks. Delete ISO image after burning is irrelevant because we're not creating an ISO image. Verify disk after burning. Basically the program will go ahead and confirm that the disk was made properly before ejecting it. This is your choice. Uh, it isn't a bad thing to use it by any means, but it will slow down the process. So use it if you want. Eject tray when done. Uh, basically, the computer will spit out the disk when it's done burning, and you'll be positive that it's finished, so I recommend leaving that checked. Select Use as Defaults and click that once. Nothing will happen, but the system will register it. And then click Accept. And now you're ready to make your first disk. I'm going to first show you how to make the most basic project so you can see just how simple this can be. Go up here and select Add Title. Now you're going to navigate to where your videos that you want to put on your disk are. In this case, I've prepared some on the desktop. So I'm just going to select the video that I want to come first on my DVD. Open. And that is added to the project. Now I'll add another title. And then I'll add another title. The bar over here on the left indicates how much space the videos that you've added though so far will take up on the uh, disk when it's burned. As of right now, we've only used a very small amount of space because none of these videos are very long. If I kept adding them, this yellow portion of the bar would continue to grow. If it passed 100%, I would simply delete the last uh, pro video from the project. You can do that by clicking the video that you want to remove from the project and, se and selecting Remove Title, and it will uh, be taken off. Once you're happy with the videos that you have selected for your DVD, load a blank disc. I recommend a DVD-R disc because those will play in virtually any DVD player with no trouble. I've already done that. And select Create DVD. Now, if this isn't the first video you've made with this project, do not be alarmed when you see this warning come up. It simply means that the program is going to delete all the temporary files that were made with the last disc that the software made. You shouldn't see this come up the first time that you make anything with the software. Simply select yes. The software will then remind you to put a disk in the tray if you haven't already. You can also check this box and it won't bother you with that warning again. And off it goes. It starts uh, first by preparing the files, then it will encode the video, encode the audio, Combine the sources into uh, the final files that are going to be put onto the disk. Uh, add subtitle, subtitles if there are any. And burn the DVD and finalize. And it just goes through step by step. You don't have to monitor this process. You can go have a sandwich or uh, go to bed or whatever it is. Fun little side note, they added a little game of Tetris into the program that you can play if you want while it is uh, authoring the disk. I'm just going to speed up time now. Now 
Alright, there we are. And the whole burning process took 7 minutes and 34 seconds. I don't have any video of it, but the disc was spit out just fine. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put that back in. Wait a second. There we go. It's registered as DVD video. So now I'll just right click and play. Now there's no menu on this disc, so it'll just start up with the first video on the disc. And there we have it. Let's just minimize that again. And close. So that's a simple project, and you saw how easy that was to make. Now let me walk you through just a couple of the more advanced options. First of all, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this program can analyze and convert basically any video that you throw at it, uh, making it DVD compatible. However, you can manually change a few, a few things about it. First of all, uh, if the program does not correctly detect whether it was a widescreen or a 4x3 video source, you can manually change that, although usually it does get it right. You can choose which frame is used as the thumbnail for the video if you uh, have a menu. By clicking through the timeline here, I can pick any one of these frames to be the thumbnail for the video in the menu. Under chapters, you can click this tab right here and have the program automatically create a chapter within any given video file at a preset number of minutes. Every 10, every 15, every 20, and so forth. You can also tell it to uh, divide the video into a preset number of chapters. Now, if your video, if you're really getting sophisticated and your video and audio are actually in, held in two different files, you can point the program to separate video and audio sources. You can also set, point it at a separate subtitle track and it will be applied to the video. There are some additional things under project settings that you may find useful. Um, you can name an individual project. Uh, this will uh, be helpful if you are creating a uh, DVD menu because the uh, name of the project will be the name on the menu. Target size, uh, basically what size media are you using to record your DVD. The standard is 4.3 gigabytes because this will fit on the 4.7 gigabyte disc which is the normal uh, DVD-R disc. Encoder, uh, the default is set to below normal so as not to impact your uh, system performance. If you set it higher, uh, the whole operation may go faster, but it may slow down other operations while your disk is being created. Under video, we have uh, target format. The default is set to NTSC, which is the US standard, also used in uh, Japan. You can set to PAL, which is the European standard. Uh, this is nice if you, uh, of course, either live in Europe or if you uh, want to send discs overseas to someone in Europe. NTSC film. If you're making a DVD strictly using source material that was recorded in uh, 24 frames per second, you can get slightly higher video performance by selecting NTSC film. And of course, mixed would be uh, for uh, mixed content. Under encoding, fastest will produce uh, lower quality, but fat, lower quality results, but in less time. And best will, of course, produce the best results, best picture quality. If you have time, I'd say set it for best. Target bitrate, I'd leave this at auto fit. Basically, it will uh, calculate the best bitrate that it can to make everything fit on the disc properly. Audio, nothing really of interest that needs to be changed here. Under playback. Uh, you can select after the first title has, been, has finished playing to automatically continue to the uh, next title to continuously loop that title to stop playing or to return to the menu. So if you wanted to create a disc where after each individual chapter was played it would automatically just revert back to the menu and somebody can select a different chapter, uh, then you would select uh, this option right here. The default, of course, play next title uh, is uh, means that we'll continue to play each title in order uh, and uh, until the uh, disc is finished. If you have put subtitle tracks on the uh, disc and you want it to turn them on by default, uh, select always enable first subtitle. We've already covered burning. Finally, if you want to add a menu to your disc, go up here to menu settings, 
Now there are only a few uh, programmed in with the uh, DVD flick here, but uh, they aren't uh, unattractive. You can just select the one that uh, you like. Uh, currently in the demo window, it's, select it's showing the title of the theme. Uh, however, when you actually create your disc, the title of your project will be uh, what is displayed here. Simply select the theme that you want and uh, click Accept. And now if I were to click Create DVD again, uh, it would burn just the same as it did the first time, but this time the disc would have a menu. From that menu, I would be able to uh, simply play everything or go to a sub-menu, which would allow me to select uh, which of the three uh, videos I wanted to start with. Now finally, if you uh, are creating a project that you uh, uh, either aren't finished or you want to uh, be able to make future copies of easily in the future, you can save your project. Simply point at the directory where you want uh, the project file to be saved. Uh, give it a name. And save. Now I can close the program here. And by simply clicking the save project file, DVD flick will reopen. And everything is exactly as I left it. So that's how to make a DVD with uh, DVD flick. As always, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it useful. If so, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on General Nerdery.